If you've ever researched chronic constipation, pretty much the only advice that you find out there is increase your fiber intake and take probiotics. It's almost universal. Everybody is just fiber it up real nice. So in this video, I'm going to help you understand why that didn't help you at all. And I'm also going to help you understand how to figure out the underlying cause of your constipation, even though nobody ever told you that that can vary from person to person. We're also going to help you understand steps you can take to poop like a champion. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So you'd have a hard time finding a medical professional that's not going to tell a person that's constipated to increase their fiber intake. Even though they've had clinical trials that have shown, hey, you know that thing where we're telling everybody to take fiber? Yeah, that's not so true. So we'll put links to that in the description below this video. But the idea behind the fiber myth is that, oh, we gotta increase the volume. You know, if there's stuff stuck in there, we'll put more stuff in there and it'll push that other stuff right out of there. Well, the human body is not a Play-Doh fun factory. You can't just put the stuff on the top and then squeeze it and it comes out the other end. I don't know every single thing about how the human body works, but I'm pretty sure it's a little more complicated than a Play-Doh fun factory. So if you have a metal pipe and you can't get a ping pong ball to go through there because it just won't fit, you're not gonna say, hey, well, that's not gonna work. Let's get a volleyball instead. We'll put this volleyball through the metal pipe. So increasing fiber content and increasing the volume of the stool doesn't really do a whole lot when you really understand the underlying causes of constipation. The studies for the links below even show that for a lot of people increasing fiber intake can magnify the constipation problem. The reason this confusion exists because if somebody's just a little bit constipated, like it's just a little bit of a problem, they can put more fiber in and be like, oh man, I pooped. Oh, this really works. Everybody should do this. But when somebody has significant constipation issues, eh, I can make it worse. And the problem is that, you know, veggie fibers, those can be beneficial. That can be helpful. But a lot of people are using these, you know, fiber supplements or they're consuming high fiber foods. And you're going to understand in a few minutes why this can be really problematic. So to really fix a chronic constipation issue, we need to understand the most common underlying causes for chronic constipation. So what we need to look at and understand is the acidity level of your stool really counts. It appears that the stool moves through the intestinal tract at a pace according to its acidity level. So if a stool is leaning a little bit more on that acidic side, it can scream through the system and go out the back door and lift you off the toilet like a rocket. And if it's very alkaline, then the stool will move a lot slower and can get hard and dry and create a chronic constipation issue. So what happens is when we eat food, our stomach is supposed to make hydrochloric acid or HCL. And this stomach acid is supposed to help us acidify that food so that we can break the food down. And then when it moves out here in the duodenum, the gallbladder squirts alkaline bile down onto that acidic product that left the stomach and it helps neutralize those acids and it does a bunch of other stuff that helps us digest our food and actually get the nutrients out of our food. The problem is, it's really common today for someone not to be making enough stomach acid. So if someone's not making enough stomach acid and they're not acidifying that food correctly, then when it comes out here, this alkaline bile is going to come down and make the stool even more alkaline. So if it doesn't acidify correctly, it'll just kind of break down by process of rotting and fermenting. And that can take a lot longer. And then once it starts moving through the intestinal tract, since it's leaning more on the alkaline side, it will move at a much slower pace. It'll get hard and we can't get it to come out and then we cuss while we're on the toilet. This can be significantly frustrating. And once we explain to the police that no, you can tell the neighbor that nobody was being murdered. I was just screaming because I can't poop. Then you go back to having some more fiber. But when we understand that this HCL has to happen to acidify that stool and allow things to move through, then we see that, oh, maybe I just need to understand, am I making enough stomach acid? So in the link in the description below this video, we'll put a link to our video for 10 signs of low stomach acid. And you can see, oh, are there other things indicating that this might be the problem for me? Now, when we take this a step further, we need to understand that this stomach acid not only helps us digest our food, it's also the barrier 
that kills all the bad guys when it comes in on the food that we're eating. So when these varmints come in, they die in an acid bath when the stomach is making enough hydrochloric acid. So if they don't die, then they come on in there and they set up camp and they raise their kids and they have a keg party and it's a great time for everybody. But when there's a bacterial overgrowth, either in the stomach or in the small intestine, for a lot of types of bacteria and other microorganisms, the waste product that they put out can be alkaline, which means they're alkalizing the stomach or alkalizing the intestinal tract even more, which is gonna make that environment even more alkaline and make that stool more alkaline, which means it's gonna move through even slower. So this can be an important factor when it comes to probiotics, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And if you have SIBO problems, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, where the bacteria has left the stomach and gone down to the small intestine and set up camp there where it should not be, we want good bacteria in the colon. We don't want a bunch of bacteria in the small intestine. So if it's there, some of these bacteria can really thrive on fiber. So here I am going to take my fiber supplement, and it's just going to help these bacteria be even happier and create even more havoc. So you can see where this really might not be the best idea for a lot of folks. Now when we understand what we call an anabolic imbalance, this situation can get even worse. So it was Dr. Emmanuel Avisi who helped us understand that the body has a natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level. So during the day, the body should be in what's called a catabolic state where it's very good at creating energy, kind of keeping us going all day, and then breaking down tissues so that they can be rebuilt and renewed. And then at night, the body moves into an anabolic state where the body is very good at sleeping and resting and rebuilding and repairing. And so both of these states are appropriate. We want to move back and forth to have both of the benefits from each state. The problem is, for a wide variety of reasons, some people can get stuck in one of those states most of the time. And if a person is stuck in one of those states most of the time, or maybe they're too far stuck into that state, it can create a wide variety of health issues. So here's where it's important to understand when it comes to constipation, because we also hear, hey, why don't you just drink some more water? Some water will help you get those bowel moving. Why don't you increase your water intake? And then the person drinks a gallon of water and then they're just kind of putting it in as they pee it out on the toilet. Like they can't get off the toilet because the more they drink, the more they have to pee. And here's what happens. In this anabolic state, the body tends to send more of our water to the kidneys and less to the bowels. If a person's in an overly catabolic state, the opposite of an anabolic state, then more of the body's water will go to the bowels and less to the kidneys. So if a person is stuck in this really anabolic state, too much water is going to the kidneys and then that stool is getting hard and it gets dry and difficult to move through the system. So here's where the bad news about fiber comes in. Most high fiber foods are high carbohydrate foods. And eating a lot of carbohydrates can be very pro-anabolic for some people. So some people are already stuck in this anabolic state where the body is sending most of the water through the kidneys. And they're like, oh, I'm going to increase my fiber. I'm going to eat a bunch more fiber-rich foods. And a lot of these fiber-rich foods are just going to be a lot more carbohydrates that are going to push them more anabolic and make the problem a whole lot worse. And oops. So you can see it's really not about following the symptoms. It's about looking at the person and understanding how their body is operating and what steps need to be corrected. So my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, chapters three and four walk you through how to figure out which aspects of digestion are not working correctly and what steps you need to take to help improve those. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can get the whole thing totally for free. And that'll walk you through that process. And it also shows you how to run simple tests at home to figure out if you might be leaning too far on that anabolic side. In the description below this video, we'll also put a link to our video on is my circadian rhythm off? And that'll kind of show you how to figure out, am I leaning too far on that anabolic side? And you can figure out from that video as well. Now, when it comes to the probiotics, we need to understand that this gut flora here in the large intestine, it really does count. Having those good beneficial bacteria really help us digest our food better, get nutrients out of our food, get everything flowing the way that it should. It really can be beneficial. But if somebody's not making enough stomach acid and the stool is really alkaline, then the probiotics aren't really going to turn that around. If a person's leaning too far on this anabolic side and the body's sending all the water to the wrong place, 
The probiotics aren't going to be magic. They're not magically going to correct that problem. So if someone doesn't have enough good gut flora, then adding some probiotics can really help speed that process of the digestion and the stool moving. It can speed it up a little bit, and that can be beneficial. But if there's other stuff broken, then they're just kind of wasting their money and they're not going to see the benefits. So then they're like, oh, I took the advice that everybody says. It doesn't work. Maybe I'm just stuck like this. My mom only pooped once a week, so that's just going to be how it is for me. But the reality is, is that you can learn how to work with your body instead of against it, and then you can see the results you want to see. So if you think that the low stomach acid might be an issue for you, jump over right now and watch our video on 10 signs of low stomach acid so you can see if proper steps need to be taken to correct that problem. I can't wait to hear about your results.